What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV. Back at y'all with another one. So, unfortunately, Julian J. Rock Williams, now formally unified junior middleweight world champion, has been upset by Rosario. By Rosario, right? In dramatic fashion, he was actually dropped and stopped in the fifth round, right? Uh, had to go off to Rosario. He stayed cool, calm, and collective under pressure in Julian J. Rock Williams' backyard, right? Uh, J. Rock Williams suffered a cut over his uh, left eye in the second round due to an overhand right. Uh, Rosario landed an overhand right, which opened up a cut over Julian J. Rock Williams' left eye. And uh, he was that cut was bothering him for the rest of the fight. He seemed not to be able to make adjustments and see the right hand coming from Rosario. Uh, and you can ask anybody who was there, when Rosario came out the locker room, I turned and I looked and I said to people around me, mainly Fred, barbershop conversation, my brother, I said to him and uh, Xavier and Ron, I said, hey, Rosario looked absolutely huge because I, I, I went over to him where they was coming doing their ring walk, right? And I said, Rosario looks absolutely huge, right? He looked every bit of 170 tonight. Every bit of it, right? He rehydrated great. He looked every bit of 170, if not more. And uh, he was able to absorb all of the punches from Julian J. Rock Williams. J. Rock was hitting him with some clean, hard punches, and he was absorbing them. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Swift Jarrett Hurd was absorbing uh, J. Rock's punches in their fight, but they was having an effect on him. Rosario was absorbing J. Rock's punches, and they wasn't having much effect on him. There was a lot of pressure on Julian J. Rock Williams to perform and put on in his hometown, uh, Philadelphia. Another hometown fight, another hometown upset, major upset. This is even more of a major upset than Julian J. Rod Williams upsetting Jared Swift Heard or Swift Jared Heard. Why? Because Julian J. Rod Williams only suffered one loss in his career, and that was to Jamal Charlo. And that was an A level fighter in the fight that he was competitive in until he got caught with a beautiful uh, catch and uppercut from Jamal Charlo. But Rosario was a bigger underdog than her than J Rock was to her. And more people gave J Rock a, more of a chance to be heard than people gave. Rosario a chance to be J Rock. So this is a bigger upset. This is the biggest upset of 2020 thus far. Of 2020 thus far. Right? And so, you know, styles make fights, and tonight just seemed like to be not to be J Rock's uh night. Right? He was getting caught with the overhand right. He was getting counted with the right. Uh on the inside, Rosario was clearly the stronger man. Uh and he was the the the, the biggest difference came in. He was just as sharp as J-Rock on the inside. That's where the biggest difference jumped right out at me. He was just as sharp as J-Rock on the inside. That's what surprised me, right? He clearly looked like the bigger man. He clearly was the bigger man in the ring. And so I expected him to be able to uh, pack a punch and to be able to absorb a punch. But I was shocked. I was highly shocked to see him be, a, be able to be as sharp and precise on the inside with J-Rock because J-Rock has a high ring IQ. He's a very good inside boxer. He's a very good boxer. Period. Overall, he's just a very good boxer. So, on the inside, I was surprised to see Rosario be able to compete with him on the inside and that's what he did. So, J-Rock ran into a great fighter tonight and not to mention the pressure of fighting in your hometown in your backyard of philadelphia 
But also, too, a huge fight looming with Jamel Charlo for unification bout. Just like uh, uh, Jamel Charlo had that big fight looming with uh, Swift Jerry Heard when he fought Tony Harrison the first time, which is a different story because it was a points, uh, a decision victory for Tony Harrison. And a lot of people thought Jamel Charlo won the fight. Uh, um, in the case of Swift Jerry Heard against J-Rock, uh, he was clearly beaten, Heard was. And then in J-Rock's case, he was stopped, right? But the pressure loomed for them to put on in their hometown and then go into that big lucrative fight with Jamel Charlo. Ironically enough, Jamel Charlo is always the big lucrative fight in the, in the waiting. Now with her situation with J-Rock, uh, uh, um, Jamel Charlo had to obviously get past Tony Harrison and was set up, but then Tony Harrison pulled out with an injury, was saw a Jamel fight, uh, uh, Jorge Coda, knock out Jorge Coda in dramatic fashion, uh, and then have to go into the Tony Harrison rematch um, later on in December, December 21st, actually, a uh, year to the date of uh, their first fight. So, you know, uh, there was a lot of pressure on them. But like I said, I was surprised that uh, 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 Rosario was able to outbox him on the inside. And, and I believe that that cut may have played a major part. But he was just very, very sharp tonight. And now this sets up a unification bout with Jamel Charlo and Rosario. Let's see how that plays out. Or is, uh, is Swift Jerry Heard? He fights next weekend, right? So he gonna have to put on next weekend. Is there a possibility? He gets the opportunity to fight Rosario and regain his titles. But there's a, a, a rematch clause uh, for Julian J. Rod Williams. Is he gonna instantly go back into the rematch? With Rosario, I kind of feel like he has to go back into the rematch with Rosario because everybody was putting pressure on uh, her when he didn't, um, when the rematch was looming for him and J-Rock and when he didn't uh, opted not to take it, you know, uh, people labeled him with the scared label or figured he knew he was going to lose. Even J-Rock Williams himself stated that you know, that was a smart move for her not to go into the immediate rematch with him. So with that said, it's kind of pressure on J-Rock to take the immediate rematch or he's going to be labeled with it. Right? Uh, if the cut doesn't open up, could it be a different fight? I believe so. I believe it could be a different fight if that cut didn't open up. Right? But the fact remains the cut did open up. And uh, it affected him. You could see him pouring at it. You know, he would land big punches. Boom, boom, boom. And he would pour at it. He would get hit with the punches and he would pour at it. So it wasn't that he was just getting hit and he was pouring at it. Uh, uh, it was back and forth, right? Nip and tuck. When he got hit, he was pouring at it. When he did the hitting, he was pouring at it. So, you know, it was, it was give and take, right? So it wasn't just the case of him getting hit and, and it affected him. It was just affecting him. It was in a bad spot, right? So... No excuses. I know Julian J. Rock Williams is not a fighter to make up excuses, so I know he's not going to make up excuses. But the facts remain is this. Uh, 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 he got hit with some overhand rights. He got hit with some beautiful punches on the inside. He wasn't the stronger fighter. Rosario was and had to go off to Rosario. Uh, like I stated, the biggest surprise to me, the biggest thing that jumped out at me is that Rosario was able to compete with him on the inside. That's where uh, uh, um, the biggest surprise for me came in. I didn't think he would be able to compete with him on the inside, and he was able to. I think Rosario, he stated that he left uh, for training camp for the first time in his career for three months. He took it very serious, two months or something like that. He took this fight very, very serious, and uh, it was the fight of his life. And he capitalized on it. He seized the moment. And so, you know, uh, he's the unified champion. Now let's see where this, this goes from here. Is, is he going to give Jamel Charlo the opportunity uh, to unify? Right? That's a big fight. That's a big fight. I know one thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise J uh, Jamel Charlo to make that a homecoming fight. 
And I wouldn't advise Rosario to make it a homecoming fight for himself either. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Homecoming fights seem not to be the move these, day, these days. Those seem to be the, uh, 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 the barrel of upset. You know, you get the barrel of bad news. That seems to be the barrel of upset. They're lining you up for failure. Too much pressure. Especially when you got big fights looming behind it on the horizon. Let those go. Let those go. But let's see how this all plays out. The 154 pound junior middleweight division is on fire. It's absolutely on fire. So let's see how this all plays out. Is Hurry gonna fight? Uh, uh, is Hurry gonna be victorious? Now it's gonna be a lot of pressure on Jared Hurry next weekend to show up and show out because it's big opportunity for him to regain his title against Rosario. Right? Uh, is he going to fight Jamel Charlo? Because we know Jamel Charlo and Julian Williams was going to fight should uh, uh, um, Julian Williams have won this fight tonight. So is that something we're going to see? Let's see how this all plays out. Is Julian J. Rock Williams going to go back into the media rematch? Let's see how it all plays out. And I can't wait. But uh, that's all I got for y'all. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV or one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.